Hi, everybody. Hi, wow. Steve. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Lisa. Hello. I changed some things around in the intro, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. I discovered it was, um, well, branded by year. So I figured I'd better bring it up to date. Um, wow. And we got some great news. One of the dogs, uh, even in that countdown timer, has been adopted. Who was that? Who got adopted again? Sweet Gunner got adopted. He Gunner went was adopted. He was on what two weeks ago? Yeah. So um or or last week or two weeks ago, recently he was on. So he got adopted. Um that's awesome. Congratulations, Gunner. Yeah. Um now we've got some more dogs we're gonna be on today and um let's see if we can get them adopted. Yeah, yeah. All right. So good show we have coming up today. Uh um we've got uh Utah and uh Texas out here. Um um uh, and we have a cat. Um, <laughs> is the cat for like adoption? Make an appearance. Cat is, is not available for adoption. Is, is, is the cat appear mix? At least. <laughs> no, please not. All right. I just thought I'd check. All right. Our first dog coming. Up. Hey, wait a minute. Any other cool announcements? I don't know who else would have gotten adopted uh, that the viewers would recognize anyway. How about, do you have an update on the contest? The big fluffy button? Oh, contest? yeah. I forgot about that. Um, get your entries in. you got five more days. We we The 16th is the last day for the entries. we got to give the judges time to, um, well, set themselves up for getting shot or something. <laughs> but everybody's a winner, no matter what. Okay. And if anybody's ever heard of the Great Pyrenees Coffee Club, the the first, the four, the first, I'm sorry, the four biggest butts uh, each get a, well, a treat bag from the Great Pyrenees Coffee Company so we can make their butts bigger. 
All right. Um, so, well, we got some good entrance in there, too. And what you do is you go out to uh, Facebook, or talk to the Rescue Show's Facebook page, and that's facebook.com rescue show. That's all it is. Um, and and uh, I've got a link. Uh, there's a promo video on GPRS's website, and there's a link that will take you right to the comment section of where you post. All you do is put your pictures in the comment section, and you're entered. And um, um, the judges' dogs can't win. One of the judges' dogs is in there. And you'll recognize that as the biggest butt. And, but the, she's allowed to enter a dog. Anybody can enter a dog, but the judges, uh, their, their dogs can't win. That just wouldn't look right now, would it? <laughs> so uh, get them entered. It's free. And, um, and the four biggest butts get celebrated for having big butts. And then we can talk about dietary issues, maybe Levi, with Levi, maybe um, the, the nutritionist. So anyway, um, let's get them entered. This is just a bunch of fun. Our first dog um, coming up uh, has a human name. I didn't, when uh, I first realized, uh, when I first started hearing about uh, him coming in, I didn't know if that was the dog or the foster dad. Sometimes I still don't. So um, here's a little peek at him and then we'll bring him up. Craig over there. Wow. He's got his some of his cues mastered like dinner time, snack time. I love it. And we do have the leash mastered. So And the leash is now mastered. Yeah, you gotta remember he's only 10 months old. And uh and yeah. you haven't had him that long, no. You weren't their I, first foster, were you? Yeah, I was. I oh, okay. All right. What can you tell us about him? So I mean, like it said in that video, they he came with his brother. They were filled with parasites. Uh they both were so sick. Um, and it took probably a good month before we even got them feeling better. Um, they were in and out of vet care. Um, so we got off on a slow to a slow start on any kind of uh, um, um, good citizenship mannerism, I guess. Yeah, or, it you know, was, they were just sick. I mean, we I've I've fostered for years and I've never had a sick dogs like that before. Wow. But they ended up having. Um, two different types of worms and um yeah some of those can be difficult to get rid of too yeah, yeah. it took about a month for us to get wow. under control um then once that happened they craig was very easy to potty train picked that up right away um thank goodness 
<laughs> um, I'm, I've turned into a professional poop picker upper. Um, I feel bad. We're all for, we're all master poopers, scoopers. Yeah. So, I mean, and then immediately we started walking both of them. Um, and he, he was definitely a puller with the leash. Um, he doesn't anymore. He's really good at staying by our side. Um, and he's really good with, which is surprisingly, um, a couple weeks ago, we were on a walk. Craig is pretty selective with male dogs. Um, wow. And some a neighbor a lady down the street decided to let her four dogs out at the same time. And they all ran over to us. Um, two of them attacked my son and bit him. But he didn't. He sat down next to me and he didn't go after any of those dogs. Those dogs came over to him and he showed nothing. No, he wasn't aggressive, nothing. Uh, but he also wasn't defensive for your son either, was he? Well, but I... At held, that age, I wouldn't expect it anyway. Yeah, and I held him back. Um, but he, oh, sat, okay. he sat next to me and... The oh, owner, that's pretty big here. Yeah, yeah. I was I was so... I mean, because when I saw them coming, I thought, oh my gosh, like this is going to be a fight because normally, you know, he can get... not. I mean, with my other male dogs, he's great. We talked about that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, he, I just didn't know how he would react. And so he did fantastic and was able, wow. we just left that situation. And wow, that's awesome. It looks like he kind of likes his foster dad too, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to find him to have him come in here. So hopefully he'll pop in here, but yeah, he loves Dave. So Dave comes home and he hears him and he goes straight to wherever he is. And then he's with him for the night. So okay. now he looks uh, like Akbosh. Um, yeah. Is that what about is he a mix with pure or, or, or yeah, are we they, certain? They, they're saying that he's a pure Akbosh. So, Good. Um, yeah. So he's definitely. Um, looks like he gets along with uh, most other dogs, but yet the video said he can be uh, selective for what male dogs he gets along with. Yeah. So we have it. We've only ran into that twice, like with his brother. He's mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't like his brother. We still we've been struggling with that for months. I didn't like my brother growing up, just so you know. <laughs> so maybe when they get older, they'll like each other. I don't know. Um, but and then there's just one other dog. Uh, my daughter, she doesn't live here anymore, but she has a dog that he doesn't like. Um, and but and that's okay. We know that, and so we mm -hmm. just don't bring him around. Um, normally, when I introduce him to other male dogs, we just do it very slowly. Um, I don't let him just run in and, you know, see what happens. Uh, we kind of do a slow meet on leashes. We'll go on a walk, something like that to introduce him. And then okay. usually he's okay. Now is that, uh, uh, Craig and his brother there in this picture? Yeah. 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 So, so somewhere along the line, they do get along somewhat. Now, do I remember that they do just fine outdoors and yeah, and they, love, yeah they love being outside together. They play so well together. Oh. Outdoors. He, that's him right now. His brother's barking. Oh, that's uh, Ann. Craig is that's Gary barking. He finally moved. He is alive. <laughs> he's going back to sleep. He lives. But this is really how he is. I mean, he's very mellow. Um, he does like to go outside and play, but for the most part, he's lounging. He just lounges. So, wow. Um, that's very awesome. Mellow, very mellow. So, that is cool. Yeah. And um, so. Well, what rescue is he with now? So he's with Great Pyrenees of Utah. Um, All right. Great Pyrenees uh, um, Rescue Resources Utah, Montana, I think is the official name. Yeah. Um, there's a banner there to go to the animal list. If you jot that down, I'll leave it up for a second. Or Melanie, whoever put it up. I can't remember. Oh, I did. I got the thing open. Um um, and he's listed, right? Uh, you can yes. read about his bio. Yeah. You can read more about him up there. Um, and if you're interested, apply, yeah. everything has, nothing can happen in, until you apply. Yeah. And yeah. the reason for applications is why, uh, Lisa, you're a screener for GPRS. Why do they got to fill out an application? We fill an application so that we can have a, um, understanding of the family and what kind of, what, they're looking okay. for in a dog. Like get to know them. Get to know them. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Go get them, Craig. Welcome to the world of the Livestock Guardian Breeds as Companions. 
Yeah, he hears something outside. So he's how dare that fly fart or fly fly fart while he's flying. Boy, I'll get it out somewhere along the line, won't I? Um, so what would his perfect home look like in your opinion? I would say his perfect home. I think he definitely needs to have another dog um, because he really does enjoy having that companionship. I would, I mean, I'd love to see him go with a female dog just so that we didn't have to worry about that. But gotcha. I'm always up to, you know, having him introduce and I mean, see, he's pretty quick. Like, you'll know, it's not going to work. Um, it doesn't take long to know that. So, I mean, that's something we could definitely look into. Mm -hmm. um, but just, and he can be left alone. He doesn't have separation anxiety. Um, he is crate trained. Um, so he knows, like we'll say, crate, Craig, go to your crate. And, you know, especially when he's kind of having a moment, you know, we say, go to your crate and he'll go and lay down and we leave the door wow. open. I don't so you can it. do all of that by saying keywords. Yeah. And so, and he's, he's got sit, he's got lay down, um, come here. And it's funny because with that breed, you know, their recall isn't great, but he's got great recall. Wait a minute. That's you're being kind. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but normally they don't, I mean, just in my experience, they don't want to come back. They'll come back whenever they decide. Or um, maybe when the job's done. Right. They're doing at right. the time. And and he's really good, but he does love to be outside, especially right now because you know we have a bunch of snow. And so they both <coughs> love being out. Well, he's 10 months old. Um, he probably doesn't remember the last time it snowed, huh? No, no. Yeah. And you got him. Uh, I think if I remember the story right, they went to they went to doggy jail, which would be the shelter. Yeah. The crime, the crime they committed was being strays. Yes. Yep. Yep. So they were strays, both of them. They went to the shelter. Um, I got them the end of July. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we've just. So you've had them for, well, they're 10 months now. Yeah. <laughs> and um, wow. Okay. Now Gary's not ready for adoption yet, but Craig certainly is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Craig, mm -hmm. Craig's ready to go. Um, he loves car rides. Um, cats. Yeah, he loves to go. Oh, and he loves cats. Like yeah, but he loves cats, but not his brother. Yeah, yeah go figure. So yeah, <laughs> brother, if he's, well, he's a ladies' man. What can I say? Yeah, for sure. And he gets along great with the girl dogs. I mean, we've had multiple girl dogs come over and play and visit with him, and he could care less. He just plays with, you know, he's not. Yeah. Busy. So. I wish I would have uploaded your video clips that you had sent because there's a really good one with him on the sofa with a probably your resident dog, just loving life. Yes, that's one of our hound. We still have him. That's Albert. That's one of our hound uh, fosters that I have. Oh, we absolutely hated him. Hated him for about. I remember a this. Yeah, he could not stand this dog, and then one day. <laughs> He just decided. That's right. I actually remember talking to you now. The video that all of a sudden they just he it clicked. Like, yeah, and now they're best buds. So and, and I'm saying if if there's somebody that just has the time and the patience to give him, that's right. That's all he needs is just you, a little time. Usually, what causes something like what she just described is trigger stacking, mm -hmm. and when you start layering off the different triggers. Well, stuff like this is capable of happening. Yeah, nice yeah. work. Yeah. So now um, he's your, now that dog is still there, the hound? I have him and his brother. So they are two, they're red hounds. Mm -hmm. um, and they're also 10 months old. So we got them at the about, well, they we got them like a week apart from each other. Okay. So, so you foster for multiple rescues then? Yes. Yeah. Huh? So we have great Pyrenees and then we also have nuzzles and then we also have paws for life. Wow. wow. We, you know, uh, this show's not breed specific. Yeah. It never has been, just so you know. I okay. want to get them exposure. Yes. Because um, hound dogs need homes too. Yes, they do. Yeah. And we've had them for a, a while, well, a long time. So we got okay. them from a farmer that was just going to dump them. And so we ended up just taking them in. Wow. Lisa, do you have any questions? I can't think of any right now. Steve, you, we mentioned that he's Akbash. Mm -hmm. What's the difference with that and a Pyrenees? Are there any significant differences in the breeds? As a companion? Yeah. No. 
there's no significant the difference that you would most likely see would be in the fields yeah okay. all right so other than that um um, but any dog can have different behaviors of any kind, but right. you can't blame that on the breed. Okay. Right. Instincts, uh, the, the breed traits of the guardians. That's why you'll most likely see any differences out in the field. Okay. Um, they're all smart ones. They're smarter than we are. In, uh, a lot of cases. Um, I was on a video call yesterday and pickles, my, my Akbosh, uh, he oh, opened the bathroom door. <laughs> Oh, wow. We don't have a handle. We have a knob. Yeah. He opened the bathroom door, let himself in, took a little piece of toilet paper or something out of there and walked off. Yeah. And um, Craig, Craig can do that. We had these really, my husband did these like barn door kind of gates and they're pretty thick and heavy and they have a latch and Craig, and I thought, this is great. They're not going to be able to get out. And Craig and he Gary, opened the gate and said, come on, everybody. I think I sent you a video of that. You and did. He flips you did. it and walks out. And I'm like, all right, well. Now what do we do? <laughs> well, um, with the Akbosh and the Great Pyrenees, Akbosh, are, they seem to make um, more snap decisions than what the peer cares to. Okay. okay. Um, so. I had to put a padlock on my outdoor shed to keep my dog out. Okay. So that's where we store empty boxes. We use empty boxes as stimulants for the brain. We can put kibble or whatever in there. Okay. That's where I store them. And he associated, he saw that once or saw it through the crack of the two doors, whatever he wanted it. I can barely open those doors and he slid them open. Wow. Wow. And he's a plus he's a puppy and I have him because I'm kind of an idiot. All right. But anyway, um, I forgot what fostering meant. I guess I don't know what to say. Yeah. Um, wow. So um, the website to apply for um, for um, Mr. Craig there is uh, right here. Just go to the main site and I probably uh, get to the application from his bio, from his Web page or. Yeah, you just fill out an application and, and kind of pencil a dog in that you like or whatever, but you still have to do the application. They got to get to know you, okay? Um, because you got to pry these dogs out of rescues, cold, dead hands, all right? But there's a reason for this. Yeah. You don't know their backstory the way they do, all right? So the, the, these folks see more suffering and pain in a day than we'll see in most. Most of us will see in our lifetimes, okay? So. Kudos, shout out to the, any rescue that's still not in the funny farm. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so volunteer, foster, because these folks, this leadership of these rescues aren't getting any younger. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, uh, we they need new people to at, at least to help foster and save these dogs. Because, man, for every one you save, how many couldn't you save because you didn't have a foster? Let, let's never make a rescue say that again, that they don't have a foster yeah. step up and it's all over the country. This isn't just with these two rescues on here or the four that support the show. This is all around the country. If you don't have a rescue that can get you a dog nearby, go to your local shelter. Usually they will let you foster. Okay. So uh, we're in kind of a weird situation in this day and age. And I tell people it's first one that has to go is the big white dog. Why is that? Because he's a big white dog. He's not that cute little eight-week-old puppy anymore. Yeah. So those people, don't get a dog. Go to Toys R Us or something. Get a dog that stays a puppy. I don't know what else to say. All right. Thank you, Amy. You're welcome. Um, so we're going to – Amy says she can stay for the show, so we'll move her off to the side. And um, um, and we can – boy, I tell you what, this next dog we have coming up, this is – the success story of all success stories. Okay. And, um, I've met this dog and she was all but feral when I met her. I'm glad they didn't tell me cause I would have screwed up my approach probably, but I got to touch her and uh, it wasn't the first time she had already been there for a while. So but anyway, we're going to give, we're going to play her video and bring her up.
and there's my girl right there. Hi, Roman. Roman's here too. And oh, everybody, on, get your up. questions together for Roman, here's and he'll answer girl. them. Here's my girl. Hello, Roman. Can you fix that, please? I'm sorry. He said, "Hello, my girl. Here is Roman." Oh, <laughs> I was saying that? hello to her first, and then to you. But I'm sorry, Roman's not a girl, as you can see. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, well. But I, but I did that because I got excited because this girl is special. I got to meet her when I was in Texas, yeah. and I'm glad you're here at this time because this girl was all but feral. And um, I do remember when I was down in Texas in November of 2022, she was there. And um, and John told me then, he says, when Olive gets adopted, I'm going to foster that girl. Okay. And here we are two years later. He's fostering this girl. What took you so long? <laughs> I'm messing with you. Um, he had other fosters that had to move. Okay. He lives by himself. We can't over, they can't overload him with dogs. Okay. And, um, but he is a dog magnet. I will say that. And uh, just like Jess's husband out there in Utah, he's a dog magnet. I, we know a few of them. Um, I don't know about Roman. He would have to uh, let me know that. I never asked. Um, yeah, he hasn't. He's still here, so he's not dog poop. So that's a positive. <laughs> wow, Eve! Holy cow! I can't believe she's here. All right, what can you tell us about her, John? Okay, um, when she came in to, to rescue, she was pregnant. Uh, GPRS took her in, and she came in a crate with the instructions, transport her, move her around in the crate. She was had never bitten anybody, but she gave the vibe that she could. So well, she yeah, she's a dog, and she has teeth. That probably yeah. qualifies. And she was very nervous, very fearful of people. So Melise has a puppy room at her house and she went in there, had her puppies. After the puppies were adopted, she went outside to one of the big pens out there and there's sheds on all the, the buildings. She didn't like the shed because we could fit in the shed. So she dug a hole under the shed. So whenever she really didn't want you to get near her, she went underneath her shed. Wow. So and she, you know, the people that fed her every day and, and, and the workers there, she would come up to the, to the fence and greet them. But anytime somebody went in her area, she would disappear. Well, so, then how do you explain the first time I met her, I was inside her house, her house, negotiating, splitting the rent with her if I stayed. <laughs> well, she trusted you then to let her there. Well, yeah, because you guys didn't tell me she was feral. And so I didn't screw up my approach by getting too nervous or overdoing it or something we don't walk on water either here okay none of us do look at her god dang that's a one good looking girl sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you but i've met her and i'm just in awe here this is one big success story so uh, eventually she would come up to the fence and it was okay to greet people through there and her tail was wagging and it eventually i mean like after a year and a half or so so she kept that going for about a year and uh she would let you give her treats and uh, some people could go inside her pen smaller people that didn't intimidate her they could go in there and get a leash on her like tammy started walking her and i was blown away that somebody could get a leash tammy on her. started walking her a long time ago yeah wow so stay girl this is your show so and, she was gprs's best kept secret then starting around then huh yeah, but Tammy, Tammy has a way, and, and just because she Tammy does could get a leash on, I could never get near her. Yeah, and I, she started letting me pet her through the stay, girl. She she can go. She she can she go, can John. Go. Stay, girl. She can go. Yeah. And, uh, she just didn't want me to hold her anymore. That and, was it. Uh, I saw that. So uh, it got better and better, and and the the amount of the new new people could come up to her and approach her through the fence and her tail would wag and she'd look happy to see people. But you know, the, the thing is she never in her whole life ever had any affection, no pets, no, nobody, you know, so it was always very hands off. You can feed me, you can rub me through the fence, but, don't but she didn't me. need you for anything else. Yeah. So I didn't know what to expect when I brought her here. I 
was mostly nervous that the first time I let her out in the yard, I would never be able to catch her again because I had a hard time putting a leash on and to bring her home. But you have help. There I had help, yeah. yeah. We surrounded her, you know, got her cornered, lassoed her. <laughs> Two great Pyrenees and, and an Aki uh, helped get her back in. So, but no, when I got her here, she was okay. I, first, I would take her out on a leash so I didn't have to worry about re-catching her. She's good on a leash. She liked being outside. Of course, dogs saw each other through the windows, lots of barking. My Max, my foster buster, he wanted to meet her right away. But she lived in my laundry room for about five days. She wouldn't come out. The doors were open. It was her safe spot. That was her being under her shed, you know, being in my laundry room. But when I brought her food, she was always happy to see me. And eventually she, you know, she trusted me enough to let her sit on her bed with her and pet her. And once she found out what petting was about, it really took. So um, I put my hands out like this and she'll, she comes to me and, and she likes to be like pet under her chin like this. And wow. uh, that's how we started. And um uh, so then she came, she would come out and hang out with us. And I thought it was, she would be here for six months or more because the heat would come on. She could hear the air come out of the vents. She'd take off. So things that didn't scare other dogs still were scaring her. But look where she is now. She's only been here uh, January 4th. She, she oh, came wow. here. So she's been here a month and a half. And she went from acting like that to this. She turned out to be an easy dog, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got pictures of her up. I was just waiting. It, it, it's it was all her, really. I mean, I I, I just kind of did hands off as much as I could because, you know, she has to approach me. There she is. She's gorgeous too. Now, what's her breeds in your opinion? Uh, now, nobody's done a DNA, I'm sure. Um, so this is all nothing but a guess, right? Yeah, sometimes when, when when she had her worried face all the time, she had a boxer look about her. Mm -hmm. And uh, now her face is calm. She doesn't really have that much of a boxer look anymore. So, uh, but we listed her there because somebody might think she looks like a boxer and it gives her another chance, you know. I'm not one of them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's kind of the profile, how, how short her snout is, and the way her her face is tilted underneath. Anyway, Debbie says least, her Debbie says her coloring. It's a boxer owner thinks she looks like a boxer and wants a flashy one. Maybe she did okay. that way. Yeah, Debbie says her coloring is beautiful, and and she's right. She is, and I'll see if I she'll let me move around. She has like a a red spot, or red or brown on the back. And it's shaped like a, a exclamation point. It's symmetric down the middle of her back, and then right above her butt, her butt, she has the period. Maybe you can enter her in the big fluffy butt contest. <laughs> she has no butt. This is well, that's okay. Bigger. You're still showing her off. It's just a fun thing. She is uh, very muscular. Um, she, my other one of my, my other adopted foster fails, Sawyer. Mm -hmm. Uh, he likes to squirrel hunt in the backyard, and she does that, plus keeps birds out of my yard. She doesn't allow <laughs> birds in the yard. Wow. Look so at her. Now, Roman, how do we explain this? I don't know. Well, I'm going to ask Roman to chime in on this one because I want to know how we explain this. Because we tell people that the dogs can't do this themselves. They need our assistance, all right? And John's sitting here telling us, hey, I didn't really do anything. Um, Hold on. <clears throat> what needs assistance? She was feral. Okay. She has breed traits. Mm -hmm. She has genetic predisposition. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you're born by a police officer, how about now? Can you hear me? Or just a second. I'm going to turn you up a little bit. John wants me to turn you up. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about now? That's oh, better. I don't have to do it. Roman did it. So if I am a son of a fireman and a nurse, my genetics are service to others, right? And so I don't have to become a nurse or I have to become a fireman. I can be working in an office, service to others. So the breed genetics 
doesn't tell you how you do the job. It does tell you your needs are to do a job, a specific job, a job, for right. example, to not tolerate certain things. So if we look at guardian dogs in general and herding dogs, we call them like specific working dogs. They have a predisposition to have a clear definition, the area they feel is theirs and how to keep things out of there or how to keep in there. So a herding dog wants to keep the herd inside that area and the guardian dog wants to keep the predators outside of that area. Both of them have a concept of inside and outside. Now, Not yet. Wants, right? So some dogs like her are very sensitive to identifying strategic actions so if she observes for a couple of minutes animals to interact with each other she can find out who is the leading person or the leading dog or bird or whatever and then they can target that particular bird to get out of the property leading to the conclusion that all the others will follow for example i know of a border collie up in connecticut she is a specific geese protection dog she protects properties of geese coming in what she does she waits 10 minutes observes the geese and then goes after a particular one and that flies away everybody flies away nobody taught her that she's smart enough to have this ability to see concepts and then identify who starts the concept that's a breed trait so cool. we may think dogs are stupid or sometimes they're stubborn and they do this and do that, but we're not seeing their capacity because we forget about supporting the dog, offering their breed traits is what makes the dog being the dog that we want. Wow. And you're hearing it right here from Roman. All right. And that reminds me, sorry, John, we're going to, we're going to, we got to go to a commercial break. Um <laughs> Roman, you got something coming up next month, don't you? You got yes, a workshop I, coming, don't you? Yeah, we have a, have a specific workshop for dog parents, so people who have guardian dogs. Wow, and, guardian breed workshop. Right, a specific for guardian dogs. I don't know guardian dogs are not just Pyrenees, right? All the working dogs who have to do with other group animals. Right, like Great Pyrenees, dogs, Pyrenees, working Bosch, dogs, Marema, whatever. All of, those, all of those dogs have one specific denominator is they like to cooperate and they like to be educated rather than corrected or punished or reinforced in this kind of thing so the main goal of that workshop is to give you a bit of a broader understanding what dog parenting is about and how can we modify behaviors how can we reinforce the dog how we can support the dog doing the job better without us getting frustrated and so that's general concepts that are not really well known, even if they're old knowing. So we know from very ancient times how people educated dogs. They didn't use shock collars. They didn't use prong collars. They didn't use well, the Romans things. actually used the prong collars on, on I forget what. They used it outwards. Well, no, the, that was the Turks that used them outwards. But you're right. I think the uh, Romans went ahead and... And they evolved outwards, use right. it to protect the, the dog, not harm the dog. who turned it inwards was actually um, a dear friend in German who actually was a military soldier. And he trained shepherds. He bred the first German shepherds. Okay. And he turned it inwards because he used it for war. Gotcha. But that's a different story. Yeah. However, the main goal is we're going to go over parenting styles. We're going to go over training styles, how do we educate the dog. We're going to go over how dogs think and how we supposed to support them and how we start communicating with them and i know we everybody talks about that and everybody says yeah this is how you talk about it well, we're going to go into science you now we are science back we know exactly how dogs think we have mri nowadays we know how the system works and we're going to discuss that it will be very simple and keep it on so i can read exactly what we talk about so and then we're going to go with different breed specific behavior so different dog even from the same breed category have a specific breed traits that you need to know about we need to know the difference between a guardian dog pyrenees and a guardian dog marema and then an um, anatolian shepherd or a greek shepherd or a balkan shepherd or all these different breeds even though there's similarities with each other they have specific breed traits that we need to know because we are rescuer because we are a foster because we have those dogs or we want to get one of those
<laughs> so no matter if you're a foster owner or trainer or whatever, this is a good thing to know. And this is a four week class. So we start on, um, when do we start and, again? And it's um, very reasonable, 67 bucks and you're in, right? Right. Um, um, but I don't want to the price because it's the knowledge you get there is invaluable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm um, going to put a link to it into, I think I can. Oh yeah. Um, I'm going to put a link to it go, in the to uh, comments. Website. Yeah. You can go to my website, holisticdogtraining.org slash events. And you're going to pop it right there. Yep. And I'm also going to put a link to it right here in the comments. Good. Now, we're going to create a little group. So everybody who joins that, and even if you cannot see it in person, you can always go back in and watch it in replay. Plus, we're going to have a little group, just, you know, people who are from the group. And we can communicate there too. So we're going to have a safe container where we can share information, problems, and we're going to go through that using all the knowledge that we learned in those four weeks and start applying them. You know what's exciting about this? And, I've, and this is actually, sadly, this is the first thing that popped into my mind. Finally, a workshop where the host won't be teaching you how to, teaching you how to handle your peer like a pool or a lab because <laughs> that doesn't work okay right and um, since we have a lot of barking going on we're gonna learn how to redirect our dog from barking without breaking the dog and without ruining the dog because sometimes dogs have to bark because that's the breed trait remember and so yeah but sometimes we need to switch call them back because of the neighbors because of the neighborhood so we're going to talk about all these things cool good Do you guys have yes. any questions i do Yes, go ahead. Anybody that watches this is going to want to know what do those letters mean behind your name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great question. question. Well, the first the first part of the number is my driving license, and the second one is <laughs> you know um, the, the first three letters is A B C is Animal Behavior College, and the C P D T is Certified Pet Dog Trainer. The certified RMT professional is, dog trainer, I think, if, if right. it's from the council. Yeah. And then is Reiki master teacher because I'm an energy healer uh, and I teach classes for energy healing. So that's the other part. So I'm, and, uh, let's call it my approach is because it's holistic and holistic doesn't mean anything for most people. No, I'm not driving a Prius, but holistic is a multidisciplinary approach of addressing behavior issues and handling dogs. So I'm not taking just positive reinforcement. I'm not just taking about corrections and punishment and quadrants, blah, blah, blah. There's other things that are involved to that. Attachment, relationship, nutrition, health conditions, uh, the dog's trauma, the dog's experience. All these things are together one piece rather than separate pieces. And different to a dog trainer who teaches the dog how to sit and stay. And most of them kind of bleed into behavior because they think by teaching the dog how to sit and lay down that addresses behavior issues. It's more complex than that. So, yeah, I do also study um, behavior psychology in England. And so that's a long distance thing. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for asking, though. Yeah, well, John, and, and here, here's the corker. That's all that would fit behind his name without covering him up on the show here. All right. He's got more. I um, mean, he's earned every one of them. Now, um, um, Amy, do you have any questions for Roman while he's here? Amy. Uh, probably, None you can think of? Well, I mean, if he, what he thinks about Craig and Gary. So, okay. He doesn't know Gary. Um, yeah. So, Craig and Gary um, are brothers. They came together um, from a shelter. I got them about six months ago. Okay. Um, Gary's got a bunch of uh, health problems, so um, we are not having him up for adoption right now until we get those figured out. Um, but Craig does not like Gary and hasn't liked Gary from the beginning. And pretty much only Gary, uh, and, uh, right? Yeah. And so I've heard from different people that it could be litter mate syndrome, but then I've heard other people well, say no such well. thing. That. Syndrome it wouldn't wouldn't be the right definition for this. Right. So um, let let me clarify that. And Steve is very right. Syndrome is a specific term, a medical term. Now, the only people say that animals have syndromes like that are actually dog people. Yeah. Cat people don't use it. Horse people don't use it. Goats people don't use it. Nobody uses it except of dogs. So somebody came up with the idea. 
and I found out who it is. It's actually a breeder who breeds um, Labradors, wrote a book, really? right? Wrote a book. And he started talking about, you know, adopting siblings will be a problem because it causes siblings aggression. Okay. Right. And so it becomes the syndrome suddenly. Okay. But there is no scientific literature that uses that term in any means. Now, okay. what we see dogs fighting with each other is not different than dogs fighting with each other. Right. Dogs have relationships. They have different type of relationships. Okay. Now, let's see, for example, there's a natural event that happens. If young dogs become adults in that period of time between 16 and 18 and two years old, they start having an internal drive to create their own family. It's a need to separate themselves from the family and create their own family. In that process of relocating themselves and you know, making sure that breed doesn't only our internal bread with each other, nature says, hey, you know what? Enough bread together. Let's get out. Let's get someone new. And so dogs want to separate. Okay. Now, in that case, it happens that dogs start becoming aggressive towards other males. Okay, it's not aggression because they want to kill each other. It's aggression because they cannot handle each other. Right. So nature tries to keep them apart so they don't stay in the together group. Now, because there are different type of relationships, if you join the class, you're gonna find out what type of relationships there are. Yes. Yeah. We're gonna find out that one of the worst one is the forced relationship, which means dog A and dog B are forced into a same, living in the same apartment in the same house, and they cannot get apart. Yes. Now, why that happens? One thing can happen is because they have attachment issues. The one dog is attached to one particular person. He's insecurely attached. And the other dog is insecurely attached to the same person. And now they have a competition over that person. And we confuse it for guarding the human. Right. So guarding the human is nothing else that if you take attention away from my partner or from my, you know, caregiver, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And before I die, I'm going to kill you instead. <laughs> right? But this is not something that's kind of dead end. Right. You can modify that by helping the dog understand that if I pay attention to dog A, you get attention too. Okay. You and you are equal. You and you are getting turns, but these are concepts and ideas some dogs don't have inbred. These are experiences. So you have inbred behavior, which is not tolerating each other if the problem happens. And then the other education part is what to do if problem happens other than going apart. Right. And this is where the secure attachment comes in. Now, secure attachment is something that most people don't know about. In fact, 62% in U.S. population are securely attached to a person. The rest of them don't know what it is. That will be me, for example. Yeah. <laughs> so secure attachment means if you are in need, who do you call? Do you call your parents right. or do you call a stranger? And the if dog can't have, pick the phone up. The stranger means you don't have a secure attachment to your parents. Okay. But that's the, this this aisle over there is about attachment theory and trauma. If you're interested, <laughs> um, for us to help that in the first class that we're going to talk about is how to create secure attachment from scratch. The okay. first time the dog will come into your home, what do you do to create those bonds safely and securely and healthy? Right. You know, we can have unhealthy relationships like me in my previous marriage. I was all about being mothered, right? That is an insecure attachment and it's a wrong relationship. And you had to fix that out. And sometimes okay. it doesn't come automatically and it doesn't heal over time. It has to technically be helped. So we have cognitive behavior therapy. We have special treatments. We have special exercises, basically teaching the dog a new concept. Okay. We don't teach him it's not about you, which is silly, but we're going to teach him, you are important to me yes. right Right after that. While you're teaching him to make better choices, yeah. right? to choose you. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. So okay. basically, you can tell him that it's Lidomate syndrome, because that was too much to try to explain. <laughs> um, right. And so, on the other hand, there could be relationships like codependent relationship, who yeah. are sick, are not healthy, where the dog cannot live with the other dog. Yeah. One simple example of those kind of 
in healthy relationships is with people meet each other in a crush, in a plane crush, in a boat sinking, and yeah. they become partners for life. Very intense. People get divorced for those reasons. Mm -hmm. And so if we have a dog, for example, who's being rescued and comes together with their partner and they grow together, they feel safe together, this is an unhealthy survival relationship. If you take oh. these dogs apart, they're going to fall apart. The one will be surviving and the other one will be going to fall apart. Yep. So you mm -hmm. think that, that maybe a possibility could be if we separate them, that that's not going to be good for Gary because Gary seems like he, I mean, Gary loves Craig loves and they get, and both of them get along well outside in the backyard too, so indoors. Yeah, this, I, is, this is proof that likely we're dealing with an attachment problem and right. not siblings. Right. So that mean they would eventually be able to live in unity, but they're not going to get adopted together. These dogs would show similar behaviors in another setting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It's not about the sibling is about the other. It's whatever okay. that is. Whatever right? it is. But there's also in the backyard, there's more options to not have to do this too. Right. No, yeah. the trigger is not there. Yeah. Right. The trigger of attachment is not there. So therefore the dog doesn't have a problem with it. Good but point. if she would go outside and try to address one dog's barking, the other dog will eventually attack the other dog to oh. show off. You know, and I'd forgotten about that. And you may have just helped me with another dog that I'm working with, not on the show. And I forgot something about that. Don't get old. It's a trap, Roman. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, so next question with, with Eve. I want to go back to Eve. Yes. Pretty sad when when the behavior consultant has questions. The most questions for the behavior consultant, isn't it? Um. So with Eve, I want to, I want I want you to explain to the viewers um, that are afraid to adopt her because of prior uh, unsocialization. Why did she uh, come around without a whole lot of human interaction again? What She did this on a lot of it on her own with a, uh, one of John's uh, Great Pyrenees that uh, is his resident dog has, I've seen that dog mentor in the past. Doesn't mean he's doing it now, but I have seen it in the past. Um, and, and he is an awesome dog as a companion. Can he help Eve become that good companion, that high achiever? I'm missing a lot of context. Who yeah, I know who? you are. Uh, she was fair. She was on way, no socialization. Okay. At six months old, she had litter of puppies. Now she's how old, John? Oh, oh, the dog that was before. Yeah, we're talking about Eve for now. We're, we, okay. we switched gears on you. We went back to her. Okay, gotcha. I'm Sorry. ADD here, you know, things <laughs> neurodivergent, like, oh, hold on, where am I? And I'm excited, um, and I'm leaving out some words because Eve's on the show. I never, this is awesome. Right, okay, let me put my smart glasses on so I look smarter. <laughs> Maybe I talk smarter. Here we go. So, um, Are those AI see. glasses? No, so I can see you better because right now I have a blurry screen showing myself, so I don't gotcha. see you. The There's Eve. Yeah, right? So, um, I had, I had a similar case the other day. So we have a dog who's not being socialized, who doesn't know how to build attachments. We're back to square one, attachment. And so since the dog doesn't know how to create attachment, somebody making espresso? I don't know what that was. I don't know either. I want espresso if your guy's doing some steam, something going on. Did he, um, did he fart? <laughs> <laughs> Um, when we look at these dogs who have not been socialized, there is also usually trauma involved. Not socializing your dog is literally neglect. Mm -hmm. and that's like, traumatic not experience. Bringing, not bringing your kid to school causes other issues around that. It, that's a trauma response. If a dog becomes social, if he has to meet a new person, he doesn't know how to make that relationship happen. So the first response going to happen is avoidance. As you learned before, the dog avoids men. Actually, he doesn't really avoid men. Dogs are not sexist. What they do avoid is confidence. So if you come in confidence, I know everything about dog. Let me tell you how to do it. The dog is like, no. So every time you put intentions to that, I intend you to do things from your dog's perspective, who is a guardian dog who's supposed to understand the difference between a prey and a predator, you come in predatory. I want you to do things. You have to comply. That's a no-no for the dog who's so sensitive. 
Now, dogs with trauma and past negative experiences, they're hypersensitive. Okay? All these people in our group who have dealt with their narcissist, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When the car drives into the driveway, you know exactly what's going to happen next. Mm. Or maybe not. Or do you? So from that perspective, so, sorry, I didn't say three before that. So for the dog's perspective, as soon as you have the intentions to do something towards the dog, the dog goes into a negative response and shows you avoidant relationship. Mm -hmm. It's going to hide, it's going to do, and then unrelated people come over, take the dog, take him out for a walk. And like, what, what just happened? Because they didn't put attention to that. They only were open for connection. That's right. Mm. Make sense? So the yeah. difference is I want you to comply and I want nothing from you. I'm here available. And the dog, boop, comes in like a magnet. Yeah. You wrote an article a few years uh, back did I? Uh, about the four different attachment relationships. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. No, but they're, they're still... four and a half-ish. They're 4.5. Right. We don't want to confuse it, though. Okay. So um, we're going to talk about that in the class anyway. So Okay, good. Good. And I figured that because um, um, that is some very good reading. And it's, and what it is, is that you get an idea of the type of attachment you have with your dog. And if it's not where you want it, you can create a goal now. Right. Okay. Unfortunately, people have the idea that because I love my dog, my dog loves me in return. But that's visual thinking. If the dog doesn't have the ability to express her feelings, that relationship is already a problem. Right. Sometimes uh -huh. we see how oh, the dog doesn't have separation anxiety, and that's a good thing to do. And then we see a dog with separation anxiety, and we think that's a bad thing. It's quite the opposite. A dog who doesn't have separation anxiety may have attachment issues. Separation right. anxiety is very common. I feel anxious if my wife leaves. I don't know where she's going. Okay. I don't care what my neighbor does. <laughs> Right. Wow. And so from that perspective, we, we want the dog to have a healthy attachment. And so John working with her dog has found out a, a, a recipe how to work with his dog. Now, a few things that we saw live on video um, and take it with a grain of salt because I don't know both of them. When John, right, when John wanted to keep the dog close, she wanted to get out. Right that holding in place which was nothing wrong i do it with my chihuahua all the time if i'm cold grab my dog for my wife put it on me so it warms me up better um this is where the dog then responds and then we have a little you know a, a, a fight under the radar like stay here yeah. and she's like i want to get out so yeah. these things can can kind of undermine the relationship and right. then if you need your dog to do something she's like no no i know what you're gonna do you're gonna hold me tight there and this is where we have to step out of it. Once we become aware of that, we can then become more conscious and recognizing when is the first sign the dog doesn't feel comfortable because she's an introvert, because she's overwhelmed, because her PTSD kicks in and she doesn't want to be held around the neck for a very long time. And some dogs get easily overwhelmed with things. Mm -hmm. They can handle a certain amount of right. petting and affection for a certain amount of time, and then it becomes overwhelming. Yes. And, and also two dogs that haven't had human interaction. It's brand new to them. Also, they right. don't know what to expect from it. Mm -hmm. so, so one thing that comes very important here is to recognize and work with your dog, teaching him consent. Mm -hmm. So the dog will let you know when she doesn't feel comfortable and when she does feel comfortable. So you can guys resume the behavior. For example, exhibit a, a dog. So I'm petting the dog. And then I stop petting the dog and the dog comes and leans against my hand. That's his consent. She tells me, keep, keep doing that. It's like my wife, when she's watching TV, I say, can you massage me? And I stop massaging and she's come closer to me. So the dog, if he wants to be petted, she's going to come closer to you. So she continue petting. But mm -hmm. if we pet the dog and the dog like mouths, you kind of uh, backwards, which means I have enough. Now mm -hmm. here's a trap. Some dogs come to you for comfort doesn't mean they want affection right right it's like your friend comes over you know your school friend you know very fancy cute high school love this person comes to you for friendship that doesn't mean they want more than that right that's correct that's, right. that's the difference so and i want to add something to this to a visitor in your home all right. This is livestock guardian breed. They're suspicious of the visitor. And just because, and one of the reasons of approach 
isn't to be touched is to be able to process the person. Okay. They have to sniff. You reach out to touch the dog may back away or may not. Mm -hmm. I give you an example for that police officer, your best friend pulls you over for speeding. Do you or do you not hug the person you know that wants to cut your ticket for speeding? Right? Okay. So if the dog is on the job and his job is to guard and protect, she wants to understand who you are and process it, smell you. Just because she comes up to smell you, she doesn't want to get touched. That she only means you. they're comfortable enough to get close enough to sniff, to process. Right. If, if the dog sits in front of you, leans on your steps on your anyway, wants to get affection, she's going to make contact first. Right. And, and then, you, then you suggest contact. You want to get petted? And she's like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just still checking. Okay. Right. And here's something that a lot of people don't realize because it's um, not as common, but also when they lean on you, it's also for protection. Okay. Yes. Self-protection. So they come in yeah. as a safe haven. That's right. Because you created that group. circle around you and that you've done amazing work by doing that. That way they don't lunge when they meet a dog on a leash. They'll come back to you for safety. Interesting. That's my number one, compl well, number two complaint. Dogs don't do, the peers don't do well when they meet a dog on a walk. So, but, but yet they're not coming back to the hand, the parent or the handler, whoever it is. That's what we need to accomplish while we're getting them back under threshold so they're not Cujo. And so there we have so many guardian breeds with so many inbred traits that yes. we are not aware of. Right? How can people out there in France and in Spain and in Hungary and in Middle East and in Balkan having their dogs without leashes, taking care of business? Well, the French guys have to have fences and stuff like that, their exception. But otherwise, dogs do their own job. You show up there, they come to you. You don't have to call them or something. Right. Now, if we go to Greece, for example, or the Balkan areas, those guardian dogs are spread over a big terrain because you know there's not so much grass, so the sheep and goats are further apart. The herd, the herder, the the shepherd communicates with whistling, and he doesn't have to be the same mountain. He can be the mountain next. Mm -hmm. to that mountain yep. and the dog knows exactly what to do like a border collie kind of thing right? That's right now also we have to see that garden dogs are very friendly to start with because they have to communicate with each other but they're unfriendly towards strangers that's right mm -hmm. right so if people get guardian dogs they just don't have the idea they're just nice fluffy white dogs they don't understand they have a loaded gun and that gun can go off at any time and it's not the gun you go take take, take to church right that's right yeah. And um, what is it, uh, Melanie and Lisa? What do rescues call an off leash peer? A gone, gone peer. Uh, disappear. Yeah. <laughs> disappear. <laughs> disappear. Um, uh, off leash training because they're a guardian. If they hear something as potential threat, they're on their way. Right. And if they're There's not no on a leash, you know, so because they are doing their job. If they're on a leash, they don't have to do their job. If they're off the leash, they do have to do their job. Okay. Um, now, there are exceptions to every rule. Okay. Like, for example, Lisa, she has off leash peer, but she lives out in the middle of the desert of Yuma, Arizona, and there's no biological life out there except her. <laughs> But the conditions are right, and her and her attachment is amazing. Right. So, uh, how strong attachment is? I know some some panhandlers are professionals, and they have professional panhandling dogs, and some of them lease the dog or rent the dog. But you're gonna find that many, um, you know, people who don't have homes who have dogs, and they are not on a leash. Whatever they do, I saw yesterday one in the supermarket. He was sitting outside in the rain, waiting for his owner to come back next to the bicycle. And this person definitely has never been a dog. Right? Um, whose dog is that? I don't know. Is it John? I can yeah. mute you, John. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got you muted, John. No, no, no. I just want to know who it well, is. Well, the show is about dogs, so the dogs yeah. are allowed to talk. Okay. But look at Craig. Check him out now. He didn't know what to think. 
Uh, is he Akash? <laughs> he's Akash. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So and cool. uh, hope, hopefully you can get signed up for Roman's workshop. Uh, I'm going. Amy. Yeah, it's really going to be. It's going to. It's going to be a great thing. I'm signing up because yeah. I don't know it all. Yeah. No, it would be great to to help get this figured out so that when they do both move on, we have some tools to share with the new family. Yeah, this is one thing that I noticed over the years because I work with several rescues and foster. Um, foster rescues there's always a lack of transfer information of what fosters learned and taught the dog is to bring that to the adopter yeah. and it's not always the foster's problem it's usually the adopter's problems all they they're want they're dynamic they want to sign the paper get the dog home because they want the dog mm -hmm. and this is a tricky part if you kind of get upset about it then that adoption may fall through because really they want an easy way out but at the same time it's it's a combination between rescue and foster to educate the dog strong enough to survive that transition mm -hmm. it's giving a toolbox to the dog so the dog can handle the mistakes of those people they wouldn't do now i know most of us are good at it they know how to work the problems around it the dog never shows those kind of behaviors because we are managing it around that but these guys will fall into that trap and not see it coming because they just do the mistakes they always do right yeah. and so it's very important for us to create, create a strategy what will the handler what the adopter will do that i have to prepare my dog, whether i like it or not Yes, yeah. the dog will jump on the couch. Yes, the dog will jump on the counter. How can we educate the dog? It's not like better. There's a better option to that. There's a better option to this. Mm -hmm. And give the dog a way out. And yes, people will grab the dog on the collar. Damn it. We don't want the dog to bite the person. So we educate the dog. What do you do if I grab your collar? Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. 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 So these are things that we will talk about because these are the triggers that likely is going to happen. And the dog going to fail the first couple of weeks. And I know there is a slogan going out there, three, 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 in three days, three weeks, three months. That's just a BS. It doesn't work like that because I haven't seen a rule like that with having relationships. You go out on three days, you're going to go in three months, and in three years, you're married. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Yeah. One of right. the rescues uh, that support the show had a, um, a comment made to him that they had to return the dog because he missed his three-week mark. On the 333 document. Yeah, one of these rescues um, sent him to me, and that's actually what he said. Oh, no, this dog's got to be broken because he did what he needed to do in three days, but this three weeks, he missed that mark. It's not a timer. Your dog is your timer, okay? And the dictionary, too. He's yeah. defined. You know, it's, it's not their fault because we no. lack on being able to share knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm easy it i mean it looks easy having three threes to remember rather than understanding deep relationships right i mean qualities. there was good intentions with that document right right okay so i think john wants to say something hang on yeah it, it's a rule of thumb because people's expectations are crazy they want it all today and they don't know how to be patient about yes. jack shit right. so yes. the 333 thing is to teach people to be freaking patient and don't expect your dog to run up and hug you and lick your face the day it shows up. Right. So that's and what it's, it's about. It's, right. It makes a valuable point there. Yeah. And, and, and that's, and I'm just getting a little, because people do return dogs. And yes. because of things like you're saying, Steve, so which way do you go? Do you just give it to them without any guidelines? And because it doesn't fit. Oh, no, 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 that's not what we have. We have. Right. The, and I agree with John and um, and the director of GPRS. They got to send something out, and nobody's given them anything to replace it with. And also, what Roman said is very important. And and the reason I do hug my fosters and grab them by the collar and do all the wrong because you know things. how to read them. Well, and also because I know that might happen when they get to their new home. And, yeah. and I didn't do that to her. When she got here, she made me Good so point. sleepy. She was yawning and yawning and licking her lips. I don't do anything, you know, that they're not going to like until all that stage is gone and they're showing that they're trusting and they're comfortable in the environment. Then I'll add this and I'll do that. I'll grab their foot yeah. and see if they like people holding their feet. 
and do things that might be a little annoying to them at first, just to expose them to the clowns they may get. You know, you know, you never know what happens when they get home. The kids may do things to dogs that yeah. their parents haven't taught them not to do. So okay. we want to expose them to a lot of things. I, that that's my goal anyway. Right. Yeah. We weren't trying to to slam you. We were trying to. Um, some people do misinterpret that into a timer. I, I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> so my personal opinion, um, as as a former rescue, I, I give up on that because I don't have the capacity to do that. Um, I, okay, I didn't have the money to do it. Let's let's talk about that. And so, <laughs> well, with most rescues, it doesn't take any money from the fosters. Uh, GPRS is one of them. It doesn't cost you a dime. Right. Um, and so one thing that I learned was if an, opt an adopter is in that agony of adopting the dog, this is a recipe for disaster. So basically I send them the paperwork. They had to read through that, they had to sign up for each individual case. And then I ask trick question before the adoption, before the appointment of the adoption, ask trick questions. What do you do if your dog is jumping on the counter? Question mark. And then I was waiting for the answer. What was the answer? Guess what? Oh, I'm going to correct him. Oh, I'm going to yell at him. Oh, I'm going to do this. Next, 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 next. Yeah. Automatically yeah. discharge because he's going to do it. No matter what you're going to say, he's going to do it anyway because that's his natural response. Because we and were then, raised to do that in this country. We we correct yeah. dogs because we were taught that that was good. Right. Well, we've learned things since then. And I, I can tell you, I, because I work specifically with dogs with trauma, I talk to people with trauma and people who have their own trauma. I says, you know what? You know how it feels like if somebody raises your hand and you do like this? That's trauma. So if you want to put your dog's leash on, that's going to happen. And their dog will bite you for it. And guess and what? It was human error that caused the bite. Right. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to untangle his leash because he got tangled up. So I grabbed him. Like, and you wonder why he bit you? Yeah. Why did he bite me? I thought you know about that. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, know, common sense is a pretty much requirement with your dog, and um, but you see, it's not all of it. Okay. And, and without the fear of sounding really stupid, I've had dogs my whole life, and I didn't know anything about them until the last three or four years of working with a rescue. And it, that's just a general population. Pe people don't talk like you do. People don't know what you know. They're they're just hey, the kids are at the age, we want to teach them responsibility, let's get them a pet. And that's pretty much, if the dog acts okay and doesn't tear the house up, that's as far as it's going to go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But John's and, actually, uh, the rescues will enrich the dogs and set them up for success the best they can. And and Roman's uh, workshop is really, really going to assist fosters too. Um, Rome, a foster can really benefit from this workshop coming up because first of all, is specific to your breeds, okay? And there so are differences. There, if there are rescues listening, and I know you guys are a little bit over time. My apologies if I talk too much. Well, uh, they don't have to watch this, but they're fosters, staying. If fosters want to attend that class and have like three, four, five fosters, send me a message. Let me know about that. We can give you a discount as a group discount. What happens if they've already signed up and now the discount's offered? Too late? <laughs> Too late. Okay, all right. So that that deal was for the started at this show, right? Yep. Awesome. I, just, okay. I just came up with that. Just because you hear, you're, uh, do you hear that, Amy? Uh, contact him. Talk, contact him personally, and uh, and he'll give you a discount code that you will enter. Probably is that how you? That's how you do that, right, Roman? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for coming on today, Roman. Yes. Um, well, I have good news. I was we're trying to capture a dog since November including ice age and all this stuff. And she got trapped today and we got her. Awesome. And so that's another experience. What breed of dog was that? Not that it matters. Um, she was actually matters a lot because I learned a lot from that. Um, Hang on a second. Was, Let me quiet John down. Say that again. She was um, Australian shepherd doodle mix. Australian doodle. <laughs> yeah. Australian doodle. Got it. But she totally reframed what I knew about dogs. You know, people say I know everything about dogs. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I recognize I know nothing about dogs. That's right. After that. Agreed. 
Agreed. I'm same way. Uh, I've worked with a lot of great Pyrenees over the 38 years I've been doing it. And I'm proud to announce I just barely made rookie level. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We're really on overtime, especially if our host or, visit or, or guests uh, have to be doing something. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to get beat up. I see that coming. So thank goodness I'm in Ohio. All right, everybody. Thank you for Thank you for coming on and thank you for watching and, and man, if man sign up for Romans, uh, it's very inexpensive, especially for what this is. This is, these are four separate classes. It's so big. It, it spans out over four weeks, right? So starts what March 12th. Is that what I'm remembering? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's what it said. All right, everybody. Bye everybody. Hey, thanks for coming. Hang on a second here. This ain't right. Now it's right. <laughs> You see everybody. Here we go. Bye.